Now this illustration deals with a scope in accordance with uh, NEC 220.1 and informational notes. Now notice the purpose of the change is just to include the calculation procedures for certain uh, facilities uh, based upon uh, maybe sizing the old current device and conductors for a branch circuit. We're on page 92 of your NEC and in the illustration we have a hospital and uh, healthcare facility, uh, you know, j j just illustrated there. More information now, if you want more detailed information, see NEC Article 517 and then FPA 99. Now, in the boxed-in information, we're going to do a calculation for uh, a branch circuit sizing the overcurrent device and conductors. Sizing the overcurrent device, step one, then it's 125% of 32 amps, which is continuous, and that'd be uh, 40 amps. It'd be 100% of 32 if, uh, if it wasn't a continuous load operating it, uh, you know, uh, less than three hours. Now, step two, we're applying uh, and sizing the overcurrent protection device. So uh, we select based upon step 140 amps from table 240.6a, we pick up 40 amp overcurrent device. So the solution is it's a 40 amp overcurrent device required. Sizing the branch circuits, we go through the same procedure. We take 125% of 32, we come up with 40. And then, of course, uh, the 40 amps uh, would require us by 210.19A1 to select from table two, uh, table 310.16, excuse me, a number eight conductor based upon a 40 amp calculation. And part four in note one in the boxed in information, Calculation methods for healthcare facilities is uh, uh, defined in, in, in the scope that, yes, it would include uh, 220 for calculations. And in part two, uh, or note two, we pick up uh, part seven, and it provides calculation methods for marinas, boat yards, commercial and non-commercial docking facilities in accordance with 220.1. And that is the purpose of this illustration, is just to illustrate the calculation procedures for different types of facilities in accordance with 220.1 and informational notes. This illustration deals with emergency disconnects in accordance to 220.4a uh, through c. Purpose of the change mainly is just uh, a new section uh, addresses the requirements for emergency disconnects and uh, isolation of uh, energy sources. Now in the illustration, uh, we'll look at the note call out at the very top right hand side of the illustration and it basically reads uh, that disconnects included could be uh, more than one and they'd need to be grouped in that case. And then the review sections is 110.21b and then you see the rest of those review sections there where you would deal with isolation means for certain sections and in, in, in particular articles. But one that should be noted uh, in the review sections is 110.21b, C1, and C2. That's the marking rules in, in accordance with Z535.4 that a electrician needs to observe and make sure that's on the label identifying it is an emergency disconnect as you see in the illustration there below the meter base with the wall disconnecting the panel board inside the facility. This illustration deals with calculating uh, loads based upon the floor area in accordance with NEC 220.5C. Now, the purpose of this change is to include the area that has to be used to calculate the loads. That's the basic uh, thing we're trying to figure out here. Now, in the note to the right top hand side of the illustration, it reads calculation does not include open porches and unfinished areas not adoptable for future use as habitable room or occupied space. Now, uh, those areas uh, are not included in the calculation. So in the calculation itself, we have a 2,800 square foot uh, dwelling and step one gives you the sections that you should look at. And then step two 
we take that 3VA per square foot, uh, which would be 3VA times 2,800, and we come up with 8,400 VA. Now, that is that uh, total VA rating is used for all the lighting and branch circuits that do not include the small appliance circuits and direct circuit loads that are routed in the dwelling unit to uh, uh, special pieces of, of equipment. And notice you have a, a lot of other call-outs that uh, you could review if you wanted to uh, and, and have a real case study uh, based upon calculating loads based upon the floor area uh, and other pertinent information pertaining to a dwelling unit. This illustration deals with other loads, all occupancies, and this kind of deals with motor outlets in accordance with 220.14c and also review uh, 220.50. Uh, now, at the very top of the illustration, we have a note in blue, meaning it is uh, a part of the code change, and it says for compressors now, you would see 220.14c, 440.6, and for sizing conductors, 440.32. If you're sizing an overcurrent device for a compressor, 440.22a. And then the uh, call out for sizing conductors for branch circuits and feeders, uh, we have our sections uh, listed there that you uh, should review for motors or compressor. But when we uh, review 430.22, we have the requirements for sizing the conductors routed from the uh, panel board overcurrent protection device to the disconnect and then to the uh, uh, receptacle that we would size off of sizing uh, the conductors at 125 percent of the table current for the motor uh, and then we'd have an attachment cap sized off of this and then uh, notice this would give us the means uh, to size these conductors so they're adequate to supply the receptacle outlet and the attachment cap that would connect the motor under these conditions. This illustration deals with dwelling units in accordance with 220.41. And if we uh, review the purpose of change, it's just basically letting you know that the three, three excuse me, the three VA per square foot will no longer be uh, listed in uh, 220.14J, but it has been removed, renumbered to 220.41. And then, of course, the note one you see up at the very right-hand side top of the illustration in the blue text, uh, it just tells you that this 3VA uh, is now found in 220.41, 1 through 3, and will not be found in 240.14J. Note 2 says, be aware that an eighth horsepower or less motor is not considered part of the minimum uh, calculated lighting load that you would be calculating. And of course, in the, calc excuse me, in the calculation itself, you see step 1, uh, the 3VA has been selected by 220.41, and in step 2, the square foot uh, of the dwelling uh, has been selected at 2,800 square foot. The 3 VA per square foot gives you a total of 8,400 VA. Now, please remember to see 220.5C, which tells you only the habitable type rooms uh, are to be used uh, in this calculation. So, review 220.5C. Uh, along with 220.11 and 220.41, and that's what this illustration is trying to illustrate to the user of the NEC. Now, this illustration deals with lighting loads for non-dwelling unit occupancies, and it kind of lists the general rules. In accordance with NEC 220.42a, an informational note, and the main purpose of this change is the existing table in the 2020 edition uh, will really section 220.12a uh, uh, along with table 220.12 has been renumbered and relocated as a new table uh, 
uh, 220.42a and the section is 220.42a that deals with this table. Now notice the table VA ratings uh, are the same uh, and they, they let you know that you don't have to put 125% on to the lighting VA loads that you see here based upon the type of the occupancy involved. But don't forget if it's a service, now you're moving over to 230.42A1 for 125% rule. For a feeder, 215.2A1A for 125% rule. And it if you happen to be calculating a branch circuit, 210.19A1A for the 125% rule. And then, of course, you remember that these uh, uh, this is a, a listed type occupancy in this table really uh, and if you do not have a listed occupancy you go to table 220.14 and use that section when you're calculating the loads for a occupancy that is not listed here in the table where you're uh, dealing with the general uh, lighting loads so uh, kind of keep that in mind and then you notice that uh, the note deals with the 125 percent rule already built in uh, to the VA ratings here and then if you look at your uh, note 5 it's been revised adding commercial storage and garages uh, are considered parking uh, garage uh, type occupancies and then the note gives you sections to review uh, to pick up the dwelling unit, which is no longer listed uh, in this uh, table, 220.42a. And that's what this illustration is all about. Now, this illustration deals with office buildings in accordance with NEC 220.43, 1 and 2. And the purpose of the change uh, mainly is that the section was renumbered as well as being relocated revised to address the procedure for calculating receptacle loads in an office building. Now let's look at some of the procedures with the boxed in information. Uh, Non-continuous loads, then if you add uh, 182 to 180 VA each per 220.14J, uh, you would come up with 32,760. 200 uh, at 180 would be uh, 36,099. And when you add all those together, you get 66,760. Uh, and in the application now of demand factors, were applicable now. Table 220.47, first 10,000, 100%. Uh, the remainder of 50,760 at 50%. And then you would have a demand, see there, 39,800 instead of 68,760. For a continuous load, then it's just figured 125%, as you see, for the continuous load uh, title head there. And then if you had a load of 21,780, do your math of 125%, 27,225. If you had a receptacle load of non continuous, 39,800, continuous duty at uh, 27,325, uh, then this would be the uh, total receptacle load that you would have there. Then you see if, you, if demand factors can be applied, and that's what this illustration is illustrating, the procedure when demand factors can be applied and when they should not be applied. Now this illustration deals with motors and air conditioning equipment. And mainly the purpose of change states that this revision was made to separate the requirements into A and B instead of just 250.50 and the 2020 edition of the NEC. So 250.A deals with the means of uh, sizing conductors and the elements and so forth for a motor. And part B to 250.50 addresses the procedure for sizing uh, the conductors and, and so forth uh, uh, to an air conditioner. And then remember, no GFCI protection is required for an AC unit as outlined in 210.8F exception number 2. We got some relief from that GFCI protection uh, interpretation some folks were making. And then, of course, you see for motors in the 
uh, blue typing, you have the sections that we should be using concerning conductor sizing. And then for the air conditioning, uh, uh, blue typing, boxed in information, you have the sections there that would be, uh, you should review when you deal with air conditioning equipment. And that's what this illustration is illustrating to the user of the NEC. Now this illustration deals with uh, appliance loads, dwelling units. 220.53 items 1 through uh, 5. Now the purpose of the change was to indicate these loads that could not be included as a fixed appliance load. Now you can see in the illustration uh, the first load is the electric range, cooking equipment, uh, clothes dryer, space heating, air conditioning equipment. Now they've included the electric car EVSE type equipment cannot be included either. But however, in accordance with 220.57, approximately page 96 in the NEC, then uh, uh, any type of electric car EVSE type load is figured at 7,200 watts minimum. And that's what this illustration is uh, trying to illustrate to the user of the NEC as the note states at the left hand side of the illustration at the top, these appliance loads shall uh, not be included uh, as outlined in 220.53, 1 through 5. And that's what this illustration is illustrating to the user of the NEC. Now, this illustration deals with cooking equipment and appliances in accordance with table uh, 220.55. Note 4 and 220.11c. Now, Note 4, you know, uh, just as hey, we can use the table uh, 220.55. Now, you have in the black type certain callouts for a branch circuit with taps to the, to the cooktop and the two ovens. Now, uh, the NEC loop gives you uh, the demand factor uh, in the section. Uh, taps and replacement outlets so that you uh, you're really up on that and then notice in the calculation form itself and we're applying the demand step one adds all the ranges together we come up with 30 uh, kW and we reduce it back to 12 kW minus 30 you get 18 kW we get 5% now demand uh, per our table for that so 5% uh, of 18 kW is uh, 90%. Now, how do we get the 18 kW? We reduce the uh, back to a 12 kW range. So 12 from the 30 kW gave you the 18. Now, in step two, uh, we get a 90% factor. So that uh, demand factor, so that'd be 190% of 8 kW will we reduce the 12 in step 1 back to 8 and we would come up then with 8 kW at 190% is 15,200 and that's the demand and that's what this illustration is illustrating to the user of the NEC. Now this illustration deals with kitchen equipment and other than dwelling units as outlined in 220.56. Now, the purpose of this change was just to uh, give the procedure for applying a demand factor when you have a certain number of units in a kitchen area or a cafeteria area, whatever, uh, where you want to apply a demand based upon the number of, the, of units that are thermostatic control. Now, in the note, you see other equipment should be included per 220.56. Uh, where they're fastened in place and rated at a quarter horsepower or greater or 500 watts or greater. Now, that's the key to determining uh, the size units that could be used. And you have uh, basically 15 units here when you count them. So step one, in accordance with table 250.66, 15 pieces of equipment allows a 65% demand, which basically says you will not be using the total wattage there uh, beyond 65% uh, in any one time for a period of time that overheat the conductors. Uh, you know, if it was a feeder, uh, ratted right over a panel feeding these. Now, and step two is the application 
of the 65% and the 82 uh, KW total 15 units. We come up then with 53.3 as our KVA uh, demand load instead of 82 KW. And that's what the solution is pointing out is the demand load, not the actual load. And that's what this illustration is illustrating to the user of the NEC. Now this illustration deals with electrical vehicle supply equipment, uh, abbreviated EVSC type load, in accordance with 220.57. Uh, and the main purpose of this change is to determine what would be the minimum VA rating used where it's not maybe on a nameplate and so forth related to the equipment. Now, uh, we calculate the load as a continuous load as we are out, we're really told to do in 625.41 on page uh, 557, I believe it is, of the NEC. But notice the uh, minimum rating in the uh, call-out above the uh, equipment there at the top of the illustration is 7,200 watts, uh, you know, uh, VA rating when you do the calculation. And then, of course, we know in 220.53 item 5, it, uh, that 7,200 uh, VA cannot be used as a fixed appliance load in a dwelling unit and 75% uh, demand applied. Now, uh, the power cord at length based upon conditions is 625.17B2 is where you want to start to read. Uh, you can also uh, pick a lot of information up on that power cord length uh, of a minimum of six foot in 625.17A3A2I uh, that you can uh, kind of pick that up. Now, uh, mainly that's what this illustration is trying to illustrate, that it is a continuous load by 625.41 of the NEC and that you cannot apply a demand factor uh, for fixed appliance type loads for dwell in dwelling units in accordance to 220.535, and the minimum VA rating is 7,200 watts. And that's what this illustration is trying to illustrate to the user of the NEC. Now, this illustration deals with non-coincidental loads in accordance with NEC 220.60. Now, for many years, uh, one designer would say, well, these loads are... Uh, of your motor and air conditioner is taken at 100% uh, percent, uh, of the nameplate rating and uh, you would just uh, basically uh, choose the larger and drop the smaller. And, and then other folks would say, no, that's not the way you do it. You figure 125% for the motor, 125% of the air conditioner, uh, and uh, that would be the method that you would use to compare the two loads to see which one of those loads you could drop. You know, like in a dwelling unit, you could have an attic fan, heating equipment, uh, and, uh, you know, you could have an air conditioning load and it's all electrical, and you would take the larger and drop the other two. Not condensed the loads that you don't use all at one time, but they can't be used all at one time. Now, that's what this illustration is all about, and notice it tells you exactly how to compute this load. In accordance to 220.60, you take each one of them at 125 percent. 20 kW at 125 percent, uh, 6316 at 125 percent. Now, which is the largest of those two loads? The 25,000, so that uh, would be the load that would be taken. And that's what this illustration is trying to illustrate to the user of the code how to calculate non coincidental loads and determine which is the larger and drop the smaller of the two. Now this illustration deals with Energy Management Systems, EMS uh, type systems. Now the purpose of the change, let's just read it together. It's kind of long here, but the purpose of the change, it's a new section that has been accepted that uh, classifies a single value equal to the maximum amperage, amperage excuse me, set point of the energy management system and shall be permitted to be used in load calculations 
for feeder or service uh, conductor, so to speak. Now, notice this is just a basic diagram of such a system and how it's related to uh, systems. But notice notes one through three kind of highlighted uh, the requirements and uh, basically, uh, you know, the limited, it, it's designed so that you could limit the current to a feeder or service in accordance with 750.30, if you want to look that up. Uh, in the note two, the set point can be used for load calculations for the feeder or service. And then note three basically says the set point of a maximum single value is considered a continuous load for calculating purposes in accordance with 220.70. And basically that's uh, what this illustration is pointing out is the procedure for calculating the load value based upon a certain set point. And that's what this illustration is illustrating to the user of the NEC. This illustration deals with determining existing loads in accordance with section 220.87 in the NEC. And the purpose of the change is to let the person doing the calculation to know that if this renewable power source PV system on the roof is connected in a certain way that you can't use it for load shedding and so forth. But the main thing, you can't use this exception for calculating a feeder circuit with demand factor uh, and using 220.87 for existing loading. Now, to illustrate this, I kind of put four bullets in here and the first bullet is just kind of dealing with letting you know that if you had a breaker as you see in this illustration below connected in it's fed from the normal power plus the PVC power suit and so note two says that if it's connected in in such a manner that it's in cogeneration with a utility uh, then you don't have to have a fastener there but note uh, three uh, does state that you can't use a breaker that is identified as a, a say line and load and use it as a back fed type circuit breaker. And then note four deals with the renewable power and it just basically says you can't use it for uh, peak shaving where you were getting a certain amount of uh, peak loading during the uh, day uh, when it's the most expensive. Uh, that you would shed some loads to get below that uh, value uh, of, of power that you were using. And then the one thing that's important in the black typing, uh, which is, uh, you know, is, is existing really uh, NEC rules, is 408.36D, right next to the incoming voltage that the DC has been uh, run through an inverter and it's AC now coming in. If it's a 408.36D as in dog and you're just feeding with a certain amount of uh, power but not the full load say, then you would have to have a fastener there so that someone would, wouldn't disconnect that breaker and it still be hot with the input voltage coming from the PV system. And that's the rules and regulations that this illustration is trying to illustrate to the user of the code. And of course, when you install a PV system, see Article 690 on page 603 for additional requirements to make such an installation. Now, this illustration uh, illustrates applying demand factors in accordance with Table 220.1101. Now, Table 220.1102 deals with Cat 3 type location C. Now, reviewing the illustration, look at the boxed in information to the left, which deals with the application of the percentages of demand factors allowed to be applied to a Cat 1 and Cat 2 location uh, in 517. Uh, and it's Table uh, 220.1101. And then, of course, right next to that is boxed in information applying a demand factor. And you can see that in step one, we had basically calculated 27,000 VA. And after we applied the 100%, the 50%, and the 25% demand percentages in the table to the left, 
and added all that up, we come up with 14,250 instead of step one, uh, 27,000 VA. So that demand and the solution and the answer is 14,250. Now, if you want a list of uh, just a fast reference list of all the tables that allow demand in this new 2023 NEC, look at 220.10 on page 93 of the NEC. And if you want to learn a little bit more about CAT 1 and CAT 2 locations, go to 517.18 and 517.19. And respectfully, those are pages 467 and 468 in the NEC. And then review the, your purpose of change here. That lists the tables that would allow demand factors to be applied to CAT 1, CAT 2, and CAT 3 locations. And that's what this illustration is illustrating to the user of the NEC.